Software applications of all types have become central to our way of doing business. It is more critical than ever before that these programs can be trusted. Since 2017, software supply chain attacks have become increasingly widespread, affecting networks, organizations, and even countries, resulting in the loss of operating efficiency, personal and proprietary information, and revenue. To combat this threat, researchers at Sandia National Laboratories have developed a powerful toolset to help safeguard IT resources against software supply chain attacks. The High Density Evaluation of COTS Application Trust and Efficacy, or a COTE project, gets ahead of the curve by dynamically assessing software through various execution states with fine-grained analysis of behaviors before it hits the enterprise. We are facing a precipice of change where we can no longer trust our software. Software supply chain is one of the number one risks facing government at the moment. Right, and this is the same issue that qu corporate industry is facing, right? Traditionally, what things like antivirus companies and things like endpoint security have done is look for that sort of linkage to say they're trying to escalate privilege, they're trying to map and touch things that they're not authorized to. So classical uh, attacks that are very overt. The challenge is if these, these attacks become less overt and more interesting on corporate espionage, stealing intellectual property, what then? All these things are happening unbeknownst to the user and they're happening at a scale that's unprecedented. Software is the wild west if you really begin to think about it. With software, you could have any number of libraries that are incorporated into this piece of software. Who's signing off on it? Nobody. At the end of the day, it's gonna be that software vendor that signs off on it and hands it off to you. But 85% of that software is generally composed of open source libraries that there isn't any type of validation being run on. In 2017, there's a piece of software called CCleaner that hackers inserted a malicious backdoor into. Now this piece of software was installed millions of times, whether through people downloading directly from the vendor's website or through an auto update feature. This software was signed, came from a trusted source, so you followed all the best practices. You didn't click any random links, you didn't you know, open any random attachments, but still your system got infected. This type of attack dovetails nicely into another common piece of security advice, which is always keep your systems up to date. It's always a good idea to keep your systems patched so that there's no known vulnerabilities that people can take advantage of. The way a lot of software developers help users accomplish this is by providing auto updates, so you don't have to constantly manually go check for updates and update the software. What make this particular attack really insidious is the fact that when they pushed a legitimate signed version, that auto-update infrastructure then pushed this backdoor version to millions of systems. If you look at uh, certain pieces of, of uh, enterprise software, they update over 52 times a year. So what we're asking is, can we look at different dimensions of, of this software as it's updated over its lifetime in the enterprise and see how it differs? Does the behavior change? Does it start doing things that look interesting, right? So are they trying to do things that they're not authorized to do or they didn't do before? Are they starting to access resources they didn't look at? When you install an application on your cell phone, the app ring system will give you uh, a bunch of options and say, do you really want to install this when it's going to access your contact list, it's going to access the network and your microphone and maybe the camera as well. Uh, it, it will ask you all these things. You get to pick and choose and say, is this software you know, does it, does it look like something that should be accessing all these, all these devices? If it's not, you, just, you can choose not to install it. And until Ikate, there's not been anything to do that on the enterprise. Ikate leverages the hypervisor in order to gain a full system view and basically see every single thing that's going on inside of an operating system that an application is doing. We can use this uh, vantage point to gather hundreds of different indicators of risky behaviors that are going on inside the system. If a risky behavior is found, the benefit of running from the hypervisor is that we essentially cannot be lied to and we can gather so much information. So if, if something risky popped up and we want to go look at it, we can really take a good deep dive and uh, look at the captured memory from the system, all the different things that the program has been doing, and just evaluate whether or not that makes sense. It got they differentiate itself in the market by utilizing five different technological pillars. 
The first of which is, of course, static analysis. Where source code is available, we can take that. Or where source code is not available, we can decompose that source code into its constituent components. Dynamic analysis provides this environment where you can execute that code, excite that code, excite that application to tease out how it reacts to certain things with the environment and the artifacts that fall out of it. The scalability of the platform allows us to also do sample testing of multiple hundreds of samples at any given time. The data that comes out of that allows us to correlate across these different samples and say, are there certain artifacts that exist across all these different samples? that provide a risk profile that we should elucidate to the decision makers. The outcome from all the data ingested from the samples allows us to automate risk analysis indicators. Automated indicators of risk, that is using either customized or templated analytics to actually extract from the data indicators of anomalous behavior or even confirmed malicious behavior. What we also take into consideration is not just the one version of software itself. We try to consider all the versions of software that are available to us, to include also patching, to include updates, to include upgrades to that software. What it allows us to do is to take to do change differentials between those versions, those changes, those updates, so that we can further reduce noise of false positives um, against the software itself. These five pillars contribute to a platform, Hecate, that does not exist in the software supply chain market today. We've heard a lot about the threats that are posed by unmanaged applications, the risks that are being introduced in the software supply chain lifecycle, and how Ecate is able to solve these. We're ready today to deploy and start protecting these networks and these critical applications across the board for industry, academia, and government. Ecate is a one-of-a-kind product that addresses several vulnerable aspects of the software supply chain. By leveraging the capabilities that come with Sandia National Laboratory's Ecate platform, information security officers can now reduce the risks that come with installing commercial and open source software on their networks.